Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Welcome back to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with me, Carl Fitzpatrick. While Jim Deegan's business, Rail Tours Ireland, was abruptly stopped in its tracks by COVID-19, but not to be deterred, Jim is now generating business by changing platforms from the international tourists to the staycationers. Jim, you started your tourism career a long time ago with Board Folge, which is of course now known as Tourism Ireland. That's right, Board Folge. I worked for um, what was then Board Folge in London. Having just emigrated myself, I was very lucky to get a job uh, in Board Folge and thus began a lifelong tourism career selling Ireland. And back then, and this was in the late 70s, Ireland wasn't a very easy place to sell in Britain uh, for obvious reasons. And how were you going about selling Ireland at that very time? Well, despite all the trouble that was going on in Ar- in, in Northern Ireland, particularly uh, there was still a, a, a steady stream of um, of British visitors, and I remember the statistics at the time was we were welcoming a million visitors from Britain. Uh, now, quite a lot were Irish-related and part of the diaspora, but there were quite a few um, uh, English visitors with no Irish connections. And of course, at that very time, you were commuting from London to Dublin on a weekly basis. At this stage, it was... It was uh, from 93 to 98. My commuting culminated in the uh, signing, signing of the Good Friday Agreement, which changed things and peace finally broke out in Ireland. And of course, that was then the nucleus for you to be able to identify an opportunity for Rail Tours Ireland. Well, yes. Coming home on a Friday night, surrounded by very eager uh, visitors, first-time visitors to Dublin, because there'd been a bit, a bit of a pent-up demand uh, for Ireland because people had been naturally nervous up to then. Uh, but on a Friday evening, the, the, the plane into Dublin was full uh, of um, eager visitors, as I say, all looking for something to do. And uh, they'd be asking me on the plane, uh, you know, what can we do in Dublin? Or, you know, we hear possibly the, 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 the areas, the regions outside Dublin, like the west or the southeast, were uh, lovely and you know, how could they get there? And uh, it was difficult for people to, to get out of Dublin at that time. The, the only tours there were were to Glendalough and to Newgrange. And uh, so I identified a um, an, an opening for a long day tour from Dublin using trains. My my former colleagues in uh, Port Falsh thought I was nuts. Uh, the idea of people getting up at 7 and, or leaving Dublin at 7 in the morning and getting back at 9 or 10 at night uh, seemed to be completely bizarre. But I just felt that there was this uh, demand for such a long tour, uh, particularly with our American friends whose time is always at a premium and unfortunately who never give Ireland long enough. And sure enough, uh, when we did la- launch the uh, product in June 1998, there was an immediate take-up. Last year, you brought in over 25,000 passengers and over 80% of them were from North America. How important was it for you to go out to North America on trade missions to promote Rail Tours Ireland? Well, as you say, 80% of our business was from North, or is from North America uh, in normal times. And um, yes, constantly uh, on trade missions, working very closely with my former colleagues um, in Tourism Ireland particularly, uh, where uh, they organize uh, several trade missions to all parts of uh, the U.S. and Canada every year. And it's very important. They're very productive, very fruitful um, uh, missions and, you know, uh, accompanied by a government minister usually. And we um, make a great impression and get the message out which uh, has been working now for many, many years. Now, many people listening to this morning show might think that those that are going on rail tours across the country from the US are probably of an older generation, but it's not the case, is it? We keep being pigeonholed in, in, in this respect. And uh, no, it's not the case at all. We have uh, students, honeymooners, people who propose at the uh, Cliffs of Moher. Um, and of course, we have our baby boomers from the States which are an important segment, but uh, we get we get family groups, we get uh, the full uh, spectrum 
from uh, our main markets. Looking back pre-COVID, how was 2020 shaping up for the business? Well, January, uh, we were. It was looking like like a, a cracker of a year. It, it was. We were about thirty percent up on last year in advance bookings, and uh, it was looking ironically like uh, one of the best years ever. And has COVID nineteen then stopped you in your tracks? Wiped us out. Uh, we would depend uh, almost a hundred percent on uh, overseas visitors. So uh, it's it's been extraordinarily difficult. Uh, and we as an industry feel completely let down by by the new government who have thrown us under the bus. That's a harsh comment to make, Jim. The wage it, subsidy it, scheme it, it, has been there for the industry. And looking at the replacement for the temporary wage subsidy scheme, the employment wage support scheme seems to be tailor-made for both the tourism and hospitality businesses. Well, that has been helpful. That was brought in by the last government. Uh, but the current government, you know, and we had we had uh, a great uh, junior minister for tourism, Brendan Griffin. Uh, but now we have a, a minister uh, who, of which tourism is one of six portfolios. So I think it's not unreasonable to think that we have been completely forgotten about. So, Jim, what would you like to see the new government do to support the industry? Well, we need to first of all uh, stop the confusion about overseas travel and quarantine and the, the sort of um, the mixed messages that are that are coming out you know I mean if we're going to have quarantine do it properly and uh, because the, the, this this uh, lukewarm quarantine that we've got this confusing quarantine is is bringing in it is bringing in some visitors there are people coming into Ireland and they're not quarantining and it's it's uh, destroying uh, what we hold dearest in Ireland, which is the welcome. I mean, imagine when you've got uh, Americans that may have come in through Northern Ireland or something, be refused entrance to a pub or a restaurant uh, or a visitor attraction. You know, it's, it's doing us terrible damage. You haven't been resting on your laurels, though. You've been adapting Rail Tours Ireland to cater for the staycation market. So how have you done that? Yes, we have come up with an, an initiative to, for the, the, the home market for, and we've come up with a staycation with the difference, which is uh, a new special private train called the Emerald Pullman. And we've chartered a, a three-car intercity train from here and there. And we do it up to the nines with uh, linen tablecloths and flowers on the tables and uh, service on board. And uh, we, this private train will take you uh, around Ireland, uh, Dublin to uh, Rosslare, to Waterford, to um, Cork and Cove, to Killarney, to Galway, and to Belfast. Uh, it, seven nights, and we have side trips then to uh, Waterford Crystal, for example, to Cork and Blarney Castle, to the Ring of Kerry, to Connemara, and in Belfast up to the Giant's Causeway. And in terms of social distancing on board the trains, how many seats has that reduced your capacity by on a typical carriage? Well, we have 190 seats on the train and we can use 68. And of course, family groups can sit together. So there's actually more, depending on the, on the, the makeup of the uh, groups of guests. And as we look ahead to 2021 into that season, I'm wondering, in terms of pre-bookings, how far in advance do you find that the Americans are booking rail tours with yourself? And what is your outlook for 2021? Well, normally, bookings start in, uh, in the autumn, uh, late autumn, November, December, and then they really take off in uh, January. Uh, the tourist season traditionally itself is like a, it's a flick of a switch. It starts on, uh, around St. Patrick's Day. Um, but here we are now in the uh, sixth month of this um, pandemic and really things are kind of getting worse and my belief is that we could be talking just like this now in six months time and things might not have improved very much so there is a, there is a certain amount of pessimism about the fact that will we have a tourist season at all in 2021 and some industry insiders are forecasting that it won't be back until at least 2023 well, if you've just tuned in, that was Jim Deegan from Rail Tours Ireland.
and I hope that it will be full steam ahead for his business in 2021. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.